morning. It is nice and warm in here, and uh, so we welcome you in the name and the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Nancy Wheeler Hanlon. I'm your Minister of Congregational Care, and we have a guest preacher this morning. We have Reverend Jeremy Gerard, who is a chaplain at Mayo and is a licensed local pastor. So what a delight to have Jeremy and his wife Lauren and daughter Hartley as part of our congregation. Some of you here at 9 o'clock may not recognize Jeremy because he and his family often go to the, our 11 o'clock Arise service. So um, we welcome you. We are glad to have Kale at the bench and Beth and the choir. And we have a baptism today. It's going to be a beautiful day to be in worship together. So thank you for being a part of this. And if you are new to our church, if you are a guest with us today, we extend an especially warm welcome. We are always glad to have people visiting with us, whether you're here in town because of a medical reason, whether you're seeking a new church home, perhaps you just felt the call of God to come this morning and be in fellowship and in worship with us. For whatever reason, we warmly welcome you. And we want to extend uh, an invitation to everyone worshiping with us today to sign in on the friendship pads. They help us know that you're here in worship. And if you are new with us, you can give us your contact information if you'd like us to follow up with you. Also, want to let you know that next Sunday we have our church conference, and if you've been coming to our church conference lately, you know that it's not just this dry, boring meeting. It's actually a great celebration. We have a wonderful meal first. We are going to have another contest, a contest for our, our potluck uh, creations. So find your best recipe for a hot or a cold casserole, now, I tend to call it a hot dish, but whatever y language you use for it, casserole, hot dish, we're going to have a contest. So, uh, you know, dig out your best recipe and uh, join us for the celebration of the life of Christ Church in the past year. I also want to let you know that ASP is selling benches today out in the commons. This is a fundraising effort. ASP stands for the Appalachian Service Project, which helps make homes in the Appala Appalachian area. I never pronounce it right. Am I getting somewhat close, Brenda? Thank you. The Appalachian Service Project to make homes warmer, safer, and drier. So this is a long-standing youth and adult mission project, and so please um, be a part of that fundraising effort. This uh, day is also our third Sunday forum day. There's going to be a forum on homelessness in Rochester, so make note of that. That will be downstairs on our lower level in the Hamlin Room. And with that, I invite us to turn in song to our hymn, We Will Sing to God in Praise, hymn number 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Let us stand if we are able.
may be seated. Would you join with me in a time of prayer? O oh, holy God, creator of winter snow and summer flowers, maker of light and darkness, lakes and deserts, minnows and whales. We come to give thanks for all you have created. In this season, when the earth around us is quiet, let us draw near to you and the warmth of your presence. In this hour of worship, let us find rest for our souls. Draw us together to be fed by your word. Warm our hearts as we sing, as we pray, and as we listen. Bless those who carry heavy burdens. We pray for those who continue to suffer in Australia and the Middle East and in Africa. We lift up those who live in places of war and violence. We bring to you our concerns for our country and its leaders. And we pray with thanks for our many newcomers and guests. We're thankful for our Sunday school teachers and youth leaders. And we're so grateful for Thrive, for the children that attend, and for their families, and for the teachers and leaders. For all these blessings, we give you praise in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. I'd like to invite all the children up for the children's lesson. Do we have any children today? <laughs> My name is Jody Peterson, and I am the children's ministry coordinator here at Christ United. Come up. Come on up. So today I have some blocks with me, and I was trying to build a tower earlier this morning, and I'm going to show you how I was building it. And I wanted to make my tower tall, so I was stacking them. But every time I got to the fourth block, it would fall over. Do you have any other ideas how I could build a tower so it wouldn't fall over? What could I do? You can make the thunder like wider. Make the, make the bottom part wider. So maybe if instead of laying them on the sk this skinny side, if I laid them flat, is this what you were thinking? Does that? <laughs> oh, I see. It will keep it balanced. Thank you very much. So building this tower reminds me of the scripture for today. It is about a man named Nicodemus. And he lived at the same time as Jesus. And Nicodemus wanted to know, how could Jesus do so many amazing things? In the Bible, there's lots of stories of all the amazing things that Jesus can do. And Jesus told Nicodemus, well, I do all these amazing things because of God's Holy Spirit. Sometimes you do something like building this tower and you have to stop and wait a little bit, rethink it, and try again. And that's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. You have to sometimes start over in order to do the things that you want to do, like we did with this tower. We're going to get ready to go to Sunday school today and learn more about Jesus and all the wonderful things that he did. But before we leave, I would like to end in a prayer. So can you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who teaches us how to pay attention to you. That was a lot, wasn't it? And follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's head to Sunday school. And now I would like to invite Ethan and his family to come up for his baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so I have the joy of presenting Ethan Casey Tweet for baptism today. And so I get to ask Ethan's parents 
these questions, and then sponsors, I'll have questions for you too. <laughs> so on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and turn away from that which separates you from God? If so, will you please answer, I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please answer, I do. I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people, all people, all different ages, all different abilities, all different races, all different backgrounds, everyone. If so, please answer, I do. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly. Yes, he's talking to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to lead a Christian life. If so, please answer, I will. And will you who sponsor Ethan, will you support Ethan and encourage him in his Christian life, walk beside him and guide him and teach him and support him and his parents? If so, please answer, I will. And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please answer, we do. Because you see, this baptismal covenant is between God and Ethan's family and Ethan's sponsors and, and all of us that we will help Ethan grow up into a beautiful man of God. Yes, that's true. That's what we're promising today. Mm -hmm. And so in preparation for your baptism, we're going to say a prayer over the water. Let us be in prayer. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept through the waters and you created all that is. You breathed upon that water and you brought forth life. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Holy Spirit. And he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. And so, O oh loving God, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Ethan who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that he may be raised with Christ and share in his final victory. Amen. What name be given this child? Ethan Casey. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Holy Spirit work within you, and bless you, and keep you, and watch over you all the days of your life. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to turn in your bulletin to the congregational response and we'll join together. Ethan Casey, Casey we, we celebrate with you and your family on Easter Baptism Day. May you, May you know, know the deep peace of Christ, the joy of grace-blessed discipleship, and, and the gift of walking your faith and your questions with other Christian disciples. We affirm on this day that your life is a gift, and that we dedicate ourselves to living as though our lives are also a gift. We pray and we celebrate, and we give thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the eternal Father of all. Amen. And now, I 
brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, hello, here we go. And we'll sing. So let us join in song. Would you turn in your hymnals now to page number 755? We will read together our psalm for today, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. For God has founded it upon the seas. And it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. They will receive blessing from the Lord. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord. Seek the face of God. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the, ruler of glory? the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler of glory. 
And now, as you are able, would you please stand as we sing together, My Life Flows On, and the Black Faith We Sing, or on the screen. may be seated. This is the time in our worship service when we get to express our thanks and gratitude to God for all that makes our hearts sing by sharing a portion of what God has given to us. It is an opportunity to give thanks for all with which we have been blessed and to have a blessing from giving because we get to help those who are in need of a warm place, those who are in need of prayer, those across the world who do not have clean water. So many opportunities we get to bless with our gifts, whether we can give a little or whether we can give a lot. It is a way to express our thanks and praise. And so would the ushers please wait upon us to receive our tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
challenges of life. We ask you to bless these gifts that they may bring hope and help to those in need. Use these gifts to be of service to others and help us to be faithful in following you. We pray, O oh God, with thanks. As we pray together, God, you are glory. We come before you to ask that you would use Christ United Methodist Church to broadcast your grace. Use us to serve you and our neighbors. Call us to boldly and tenderly reveal your glory. Stir us and lead us to be your witnesses. Wake us and implant possibility in our hearts. We pray through the powerful heart of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you. Can you read the Bible? It always helps when you're asked to read scripture to have a Bible. Uh, I found that's a 
an important part. Our scripture this morning comes from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. We call it Philippians. Chapter 4, uh, verses 4 through 9, Paul writes this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving, let your, pres- let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. My name is Jeremy Gerard. As Pastor Nancy said, I am a United Methodist licensed local pastor, newly appointed as one of the pediatric chaplains at Mayo. Uh, For those of you unfamiliar with the intricate nuances of Methodist ordination policy and process, um, functionally that just means I'm a pastor um, that is am not yet ordained, um, and so serve in my ministry capacity as a chaplain. As my wife, uh, Lauren, and daughter, Hartley, were preparing to move to town in September, it didn't take long for us to hear about this congregation's incredible mission, the community you have here, the dedication to justice. And so it wasn't, hard, it wasn't a hard decision to call this place our new church home. And I am honored to share a word with you all this morning. I've got a little bit of a frog in my throat. Um, I'm afraid that Hartley has shared a cold with me, so uh, excuse me if I have to turn away occasionally. As I was meditating on the text for this week, I thought how appropriate that a chaplain would be scheduled on a week in which the text was about rejoicing in the Lord always. Don't worry about anything, pray about it, God will, the God, God's peace will be with you. Spoiler alert, it's not quite that simple. As you might imagine, my work as a hospital chaplain frequently brings me into places and relationships in which deep sadness, pain, and fear are ever-present realities. As a pediatric chaplain, I visit with children and families across the spectrum of disease, treatments, and outcomes. I've listened to the stories of worried parents wondering how they can best support their hospitalized kid and still attend to the needs of their children back home sat with scared teenagers facing the reality that their life will be very different than they had dreamed it might be, and wept, wept with families making the heartbreaking and grace-filled decisions to donate the organs of their beloved child. So please, allow me to be very clear when I read to you scripture saying, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. I am not saying, oh, is something bothering you? Don't worry about it, just pray, I'm sure it'll be okay. This verse has a history, especially in the modern American church, of diminishing, minimizing, and neutering real hurt and pain, and fear. Not today. And I don't think that's what Paul was intending anyways. He writes, in everything, everything, let your requests be known to God. If everything means anything, it better mean everything. Not just our joys or our celebrations, not just victories. It certainly includes those things as well, 
but it also includes angry prayers, tearful prayers, prayers that sound a lot more like demands than what I think of when I hear rejoicing. Prayers like Psalm 13. Psalm 13, the psalmist prays, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will this evil thing triumph over me? Look at me. Answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And this thing will say, I have overcome him. And it will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for God has been good to me. That is the kind of prayer I envision Paul having in mind when he writes this letter. Not some pie in the sky, everything's great, God. Thanks for all of this. We're so grateful. Nothing hurts or is soul crushing at all. No. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be grateful that you worship a God who is comfortable with your praying your everything. A God who is not angered by your fear or doubt or anxiety. A God who desires your honesty, who is willing to listen to us in all of the fullness of our emotion and experience. Friends, this is something for which I am immensely thankful. I share my prayers by myself and with people in the hospital with thanksgiving, knowing that there are no off-limits prayers with our God. And do you know, the most common reaction I hear in the hospital when I share uh, with our Christian patients, so many of whom have been taught erroneously that they can only bring their joy to God, when I share this theology of praying our everything, almost universally they say, oh, what a relief. Or that feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. They are describing the peace of God, which passes all understanding, that is with us in the midst of the reality of our lives. Which is maybe why Paul can tell us, do not worry. Not because there isn't something to worry about. For those unaware, Paul writes this letter from prison with a very real possibility that he will be executed for his evangelistic work. By any measure, he's got stuff to worry about. By saying, do not worry, he reminds us that God is with us. The peace of God is with us, and it passes all understanding, which is good, because there's a lot of life and circumstances and tragedies that I don't understand. But God's peace, God's presence with us is guarding our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Then Paul takes a turn, sort of writing, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, commendable, if there's any excellence in anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You know who's really good at focusing on what is pure and pleasing and fun in the midst of difficult situations? Children. I could, and frequently do, on a daily basis, play dinosaurs and Legos and sometimes Lego dinosaurs, which they have now, uh, with little boys and girls who have cancer. They know they're sick. They know why they're in the hospital. And yet they are quick to remember that there is goodness and fun and pleasure and simple play like roaring dinosaurs and driving cars in the hallway. And I talk with teenagers who show me their art, beautiful art, demonstrating all levels of ability from none to phenomenal. And it doesn't matter because it is pure 
and it helps give them meaning and expression and escape from the pain that they're experiencing. People of God, there is goodness all around. The front of our bulletin this morning has a beautiful quote by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, using, used in the, the Richard Rohr book that is the subject of our congregational book study. She writes, Earth is crammed with heaven and every common bush of fire with God, but only the one who sees takes off his shoes. There is goodness all around. Are we looking for it? In his book, Rohr talks about the difficulty we as humans have in noticing and holding on to goodness. He references a concept from neuroscience uh, called the Velcro Teflon theory of the mind. This theory names the reality that I certainly know all too well, that we hold on to negative thoughts and circumstances like Velcro, and positive ones we let slip past, as if on Teflon. Thinking this way has roots in our evolutionary history. We had to learn to remember what plants killed the last person who ate it, or what sounds or animals were dangerous. But is this propensity still serving us in this time in the same survival function? How many of you have have had work performance reviews or maybe an exam at school? There can be a list of things you're doing wonderfully. Question after question, you get correct. Whatever it looks like in your world. And then there's one or two growing edges or that X in red pen on a wrong answer. And what do we so often focus on? What do I focus on? It is hard, and is that reality helping us to survive or thrive? So what are we to do? Succumb to this seemingly natural tendency? No. Rohr says the only way then to increase authentic spirituality is to deliberately practice, actually enjoying a positive experience and a grateful heart. Paul puts it this way. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, worthy of praise, think about these things. Focus on these things. Because it is hard to not get swept away by everything else. Paul knows this. And that's why he follows up by conjoling his friends to keep on doing these things. Practice. Practice. And practice some more because there will always be situations and circumstances in which we have ample opportunity to let our requests be made known to God and be thankful that we can do so in the fullness of our emotional spectrum. And in the midst of those hard or hurtful situations and circumstances, it is all the more valuable to be practiced in searching for the goodness that is present, the heaven crammed throughout the earth, the burning bush that is the presence of God in our midst. If we would but have the eyes to see, to take off our shoes and dwell in the peace of God that passes all understanding. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our closing hymn.
ministry of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Brothers and sisters, your dreams should not go unnoticed. God knows your dreams. Now dare to dream out loud so that the world may discover what God can do through you. Go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Amen.